in this video I'm going to talk about how to apply for PhD and how to write a research proposal for the same. I know that all the students who are applying for NET exam somewhere in their mind want to do PhD in some point in their life. But since this PhD thing is a very new space for them, they're really worried. They don't know how to fill a PhD application form, how to go about with it, what are they going to say on the day of the interview. They are not sure about how to write a research proposal, how to pick up a topic for PhD research. And there are a lot of questions which keep on bombarding their brain. So I thought of making a video in which in a step-by-step -step manner, I can tell you each and everything that you want to know about PhD. So for your convenience, I've divided this video in two sections. In the first part, I'm going to talk about how to apply for PhD in any university or college. So I'm going to tell you all the steps that you need to take and the entire procedure of PhD. In the second part of the video, I'm going to talk about research proposal in detail. So I'm going to give you all the guidelines for writing a good research proposal, how to choose your topic, and then how to organize your research proposal academically and how to write it in a particular format. So watch this video till the end because if you look forward to do PhD in future, I'm sure this video is going to help you out. So if you're really aspiring to become a research scholar, there are a few things that you need to know and there are a few steps that you need to take before you get yourself enrolled as a research scholar in a university. Now, this process might seem tiresome, but I'm telling you that it is way more simpler than you have, you must have imagined. So I've broken it down in five steps so that you can know where to start and where to end. The first step is that make a list of all the universities where you wish to apply for PhD. So whatever your subject may be, you need to have a word with your professors or maybe with your uh, friends and then finalize a list of colleges or universities where you wish to apply for PhD. Step number two is visit the website of all these universities that you have listed down and then one by one, jot down the dates when their PhD forms would be releasing. For example, if you are looking forward to do PhD in English and you might uh, want to do it from Delhi University or maybe from Jamia or from JNU, then just go to these websites and there's a section, a specific section for PhD scholars where you can see all the recent notification and you can even see when are they going to release the form for the PhD admission. So just jot down the names of those colleges as well as the dates when their forms would be released. And before that day, keep on checking their website on a regular basis so that you know if there's any update. There's no other way you can know about the PhD entrance forms unless and until you go to their website and check it yourself. Now the third important step that you take is to fill the application form. Once the application forms are released on the website of the college or university where you wish to apply for PhD, you need to fill the application form at the earliest. Don't wait for the last date. It's better to fill it in the initial days so that you don't face any server issue or any other issue. Now, once you're filling your application form, you need to take care of a few things. Number one, keep all your documents scanned. Okay, in your computer folder before you sit to fill the application form because in almost all the universities and colleges, they are going to ask for a scanned copy of your image, scanned copy of your signature and all the scanned copy of uh, different uh, graduation and post-graduation mark sheets. So you need to have that in place. Apart from that, also understand that there are a few universities in India where you need to submit a research proposal while you're filling the PhD application form. Okay, because uh, you might have this notion in your mind that, okay, we need to submit the research proposal on the day of the interview. No, there are a few universities like the universities where you need to submit your research proposal on the day when you're submitting your PhD application form. So always have that ready with you. How to write it, what are the guidelines, what are the things you need to have in mind while writing a research proposal. I'm going to discuss all of that in the next section. So just patiently wait for that section to come. The fourth step is the written test or the entrance test. 
Now, once you have filled the application form, keep visiting the website of that university on and off so that you get to know when are they conducting the entrance test. There are a few universities where you need to sit for the entrance test and then for the interview. Whereas if you have your next certificate in a few universities, you will be exempted from the written test because you have already cleared net exam and you can directly sit for the interview. So be sure what is the process of the university in which you are applying. If you need to sit for the entrance, you have to prepare well for the entrance. Most of the time, the syllabus that you've studied for net exam would be very similar to the syllabus for the PhD entrance as well. Or in case, if you already have PhD or you have the net certificate and your university exempts you from the entrance test, you just need to wait for the notification of interview to be released on their website. And finally, we come on to the fifth step that is interview. So on the day of the interview, you just need to have all the original documents lined up in your folder, in a file, which you're going to carry because you need to submit a copy of that before you go and sit for the interview. Apart from that, there are a few things you need to remember for the interview. Number one, you need to have a thorough command on your subject. So get all your basics right. You need to know about your masters, about all the things you've studied in your masters because most of the questions are going to come from that. Apart from that, they are also going to ask you a lot of questions about your research proposal. So make sure you have not copy and pasted your research proposal from some internet websites because they are going to catch you. You need to understand the fact that research proposal is your baby. So it should be your ideas. It should contain your vision, your objectives. You can take references from various sites, from various friends, but at the end, you make sure that you have written it. So once you give your interview, uh, after a few days, you will find that they're going to announce a list of candidates who they have selected for PhD and the list is going to most probably be released on their website. You can check the list. If you are lucky to have your name in that list, then you should celebrate because that is when you get to know that you have finally managed to get uh, yourself admitted as a research scholar in that university. And after that, uh, there are a lot of other things that you need to do. You need to go through a period of coursework, then there would be a presentation when you're going to talk about your research proposal and finally your topic would be finalized. Then you have a face-to-face -face interaction with your guide. You'll start writing about uh, the research that you're doing. You're going to chapterize it. You're going to categorize it. And all these things are going to smoothly happen because once you get yourself enrolled in any good university, it's the duty of that university and the guide to take you through this process because they also know that it's entirely new for you. You've just managed to uh, clear a post-graduation course, okay, and now this research field is new to you. So they are going to tell you each and everything about it. The only thing you need to focus right now is this five-step journey that you have to take all by yourself. There's nobody to guide you at this moment. Once you pass the interview, you get selected. After that, you will have the entire uh, university team that is going to help you in the next couple of years. Now that we have known how to apply in a university for PhD, it's important for you to understand how to write a research proposal. I've been receiving a lot of phone calls on a daily basis where students ask me, please suggest a topic for research proposal. Please tell me how to write a research proposal. So I thought that it's high time I should make a video so that you know everybody can know how this entire thing takes place. So for you to understand how to write a research proposal, I've coined an acronym, okay, which is called Type Polymer. Now, all the parts of this Thai polymer is going to tell you what all things you need to incorporate in a research proposal because it's a very systematic thing. It follows a format and once you write everything in the format only then the university is going to accept your research proposal. So let's start with the T. So T stands for title. The first important thing in your research proposal is the title of your research. So what are you going to research? It should be concise and it should be meaningful. You should not write an entire paragraph as a title or else you should not leave it very open-ended. Okay, so it should be very concise as well as it should be meaningful. It should tell what exactly are you researching on. 
The next is introduction, which stands with I. Okay, so introduction is going to include all the basic facts about your research and your research area, which is the area where you are researching. You are also going to add about the area and the importance of that area. Why you have chosen that area for research? How is it going to benefit the humankind? Plus, you are also going to add a few things about the motivation. So, what motivated you to take that area? Okay, for example, I'm doing a, a PhD research right now and the topic of my research is Myth as a Vehicle of Philosophy in the Works of Devdat Patnayak. So, my area is in mythology and there's a huge motivation behind it because I've been brought up in a very religious family and I've been reading a lot about Indian mythology and Ramayana, Mahabharata, Bhagavad Mahapuran. So that is what excites me and I'm really passionate about knowing more and more about it. So that is where the motivation part comes from and that is what I have to include in introduction. The third thing is... With P, we have problem statement. Now, what is a problem statement? A problem statement is going to tell about the issues that you're going to address in your research. What is the problem that you are looking at? And you are going to talk about it in a very clear and concise manner. The next is your objectives. Now, what is objective? Objective is the motive why you are doing the research. What are the benefits that you are going to derive after this research? So basically the university which is going to take you as a research scholar, they are going to uh, ask you that why should they allow you to do this research? Like what is the objective? What are you going to do for the benefit of the mankind? So basically you need to write five to six objectives and that is the cue. So whenever we do anything, we ask ourselves, Q Okay, so that Q is the objective. So it is the motive and the benefit that is going to come out of this research. So after objective, the next important thing you need to mention in your research proposal is the literature review. So you need to tell the college or the university professors about what already has been done in your field of research. For example, if my topic is Indian mythology, I need to talk about all the research which has already been done on Indian mythology and how my research is different from them. There's no point doing the same thing all over again. If someone has actually done the same thing, then I cannot research on the same topic because then what am I going to do? Everything about that topic has already been found by that person. So in literature review, you're going to talk about all the research uh, work that has already been done in your field and how your research is going to be different from that and how you were not able to find certain answers in their research and that is why you're going to answer those things in your research. So that is about the literature review. We move on to the next topic which is research methodologies. Now what is research methodology? Research methodology basically talks about the tools and the methods that you are used, uh, that you're going to use in the course of your research in order to solve the problem that you have in your hand. So for example, if I'm talking about myth as a vehicle of philosophy in the works of uh, Devdat Patnayak, I'm going to use myth criticism, I'm going to use psychoanalytical criticism in order to study the works of Devdat Patnayak. Similarly, you can use case study, survey in order to gather information about the problem and finally move towards the solution. So that is going to be there written in the research methodology. Last but not the least, we move on to the section which is called references. We all know that there's a limitation of human brain. We cannot know everything. Whenever we are researching on anything, we are going to take help from various sources and it is our duty to tell uh, everybody about the sources from which we have taken help. So all those sources are mentioned in the references section and there's a particular style in which you mention all these writers. I still remember that during my graduation I was doing a research in the field of psychology and uh, there was this particular format we used to always 
use while we were giving references to the books and to the writers and that was known as the American Psychological Association. So APA style we were using. Similarly in different fields you have different styles of referencing. So you need to adhere by that style and accordingly you need to cite all the people from which you have taken inspiration, from which you have taken some facts and you have shared it in your research proposal. So I'm believing that the video turned out to be a bit boring because it had so much information that I wanted to give you but I'm sure that this information is going to help you if you are aiming to do PhD in any good university or college. I'm wishing you all the best for your future endeavors. Stay tuned to arpitakarwa.com and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We are very close to hit 1 lakh subscribers and that would be a big thing for us. So do support us and you can also follow us on the social media platform. If you are preparing for UGC Net English, then you can go to my website arpitakarwa.com and check out the online course we are offering you. So that's it for this video lecture. We are going to meet very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarbar.com.